LVCP staff psychologist Dr. James Kent explores the importance of seeking mental health treatment following a violent crime. Why is it important for victims of violent crime to obtain mental health services? It's important for a couple of reasons. One, most crimes affect people's sense of security in the world and they will um, try to avoid reminders of it and, um, and avoid places or, or thoughts or things or people remind them of it. So it can lead to some withdrawal um, from everyday activities, from work activities, uh, from one's life. Uh, that's one of the major causes. The other is that it will affect behaviors, sometimes in ways which we're not conscious of, that are not always in our best interest to have affected. Uh, so it's a good idea sometimes to have someone else take another look at the consequences of the crime and on your own behavior to help with that if possible. What mental health services are available to victims? We generally support the sometimes called the talking cure. Um, psychotherapy, uh, which is really an attempt, uh, an effort to get people to describe what's happened to them, to describe, uh, to develop a trauma narrative, and to deal with materials and thoughts, feelings that are difficult for them to deal with uh, and help mitigate the impact of that on their behavior and thoughts. Are mental health services covered by CalVCP? Mental health services are covered as long as they are necessary as a direct result of the crime and as long as there is reason to believe that they will benefit the claimant. How do violent crimes affect a child's mental health? I think probably the main cause, it, it affects their security in the world. Um, now, and if you're going to talk against about one crime uh, against a child, say a, a, a sexual assault or a physical assault, uh, against a child uh, versus something that goes on over a period of months or years that may affect their relationships. Um, both of those, both of those, the, the long term and the short term will affect a child's sense of safety and security in the world. Um, the longer term one will also affect considerably their belief that they are um, a, a, a worthy, lovable person. Uh, and can behave in ways and that are not that are not good for them. It's kind of different for kids in the sense that each level that they develop is going to. If if the crime happens down here and you move on to the next level, it's distorted ways you think and perceive the world and how you think it perceives you, and so it it it's carried on as a consequence through uh, sometimes throughout a lifetime if it isn't treated. How is mental health counseling different for children? It's different in that m most children don't grow up with a model for sitting down face to face with an adult and uh, most of the conversations you know, take place over the back seat or on the breakfast table uh, in 10-15 minute intense maybe episodes but they're, they're time limited. Uh, so the therapy for the kids is not uh, you sit there, I sit here, and we talk and forth about it. There's usually another activity involved. It could be a play activity, uh, something that um, we can use to um, parallel, illustrate some aspects of what we think you're feeling, uh, the crime, and have you deal with it in an indirect way as well as with a direct way. So you get lots of play therapy and sand tray therapy and kind of indirect methods with kids. What activities help children open up during counseling sessions? Um, you might start off with games, Candyland, or just some of the games with, that, are, that are fairly neutral. Uh, and you may develop that from that into play therapy where you can use the themes that you kind of um, engineer to reflect what your belief about what this youngster suffered and what they are feeling um, so that they can deal with it in an indirect fashion with, uh, with the toys, with the dolls, with the, with the, with the other things. It's, it's an easier approach than to say you, what we're going to talk about, the something here. So it's kind of constructing something that the youngster feels and can deal with. No use making them anxious and frightened all over again. What prevents victims from getting the mental health support they need? One of them is uh, for adults thinking, I can deal with this by myself, I don't need somebody else. Uh, another is that uh, admitting a weakness in myself, I think I've got to go talk to somebody about this. Another can be uh, concerns that it's going to bring shame or embarrassment to the family. Um, that's very common in some cultures. Uh, third is that it 
it's embarrassing for you to talk about, to have suffered, to, for one to have suffered this crime, uh, and you don't want to think about it or talk about it. Uh, so avoidance is the best means of doing that, they think. Those are the common impediments. What happens to victims who do not get mental health treatment? They, they nearly always recover in some fashion or another. The, the direction and the shape of it will be affected by whether they've had treatment or not. Um, in cases, say, of uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, it, it turns out that about half the people who suffer a violent crime are going to recover spontaneously, or, well, spontaneous is the wrong word, w without professional intervention in the course of, say, six months. They're going to learn to deal with it. The memory doesn't go away. The thoughts, the feelings don't exactly go away, but the intensity diminishes, and it just becomes something else um, you can think about. If you are, for instance, a, a survivor of a, of a crime at home or a survivor of, uh, of um, violence in combat, uh, justified combat, uh, you, you don't forget those things, but they become less compelling in your life, less willing to, um, uh, to direct your life, even though you may from time to time remember them or have a bad dream about them or have a thought that you wish you hadn't thought, um, but life goes on and you go on. What is your message to crime victims? I think the main message is, and especially if you've not been in treatment before, this is a brand new enterprise for you. Uh, and if it doesn't work with the first person you see, and relationships are a crucial part of mental health treatment, perhaps some studies indicate the most important piece of determining whether it's going to work or not. And like blind dates, they don't always work the first time. Uh, so don't assume if you go to somebody and you're not getting help or the relationship isn't working, don't assume it's your fault or your crime. Try somebody else. Take a rest and move on. Uh, with time, with help, you're going to find the right person.